Hahadashat 12 Hebrew, HHDeswit 12, lit. Channel 12 News is a collective brand of Israeli television news programs produced for Keshet 12 by Keshet Media Group subsidiary Israel Television News Company Hebrew, HBR HHDeswit Heiserlit BM Translit. Hevrat HaHadashat HaIsraelit BAM, lit. Israeli News Company Limited, a.k.a. Hevrat HaHadashat Hebrew, HBR HHDeswit lit. The News Company. Its flagship evening news bulletin is broadcast at 8 p.m. East, mainly anchored by Yannit Levi and Danny Kushmaro. The company originally served as the news department of Channel 2, where the bulletins were known as Hahadashat 2 Hebrew, HHDeswit 2, lit. Channel 2 News, and was funded by its concessionaires, Keshet Media Group and Reshet. Telid was also used to fund the company until it lost timeslots on Channel 2 in 2005. Since 1 November 2017 replacement of Channel 2 with Keshet 12 and Reshet 13 until 15 January 2019, its news programming has been split between the two channels, for example, Hatoknit Hakalkalit Hebrew for the economic program was broadcast on Keshet 12, while Leila Tov Israel Hebrew for Good Evening Israel and P. Gosh et Hatanut Hebrew for Meet the Press were shown on Reshet 13. However, the flagship bulletin was simulcast on both channels. During the period, the company's programs did not cross-promote Keshet's and Reshet's television shows. The company's personalities did not make appearances on the latter two's shows as well. Following the merger between Reshet and Channel 10 that took effect on 16 January 2019, Keshet took the full ownership of the company. Meanwhile, Reshet took resources and programs from Channel 10's news production company, which subsequently changed its on-air branding to Hahadashat 13. Since 2000, its studios are located in Kiryat Hatikshorat lit. Media's complex of Globus Group, company in Neve Elon on Jerusalem Mountains. Prior to that, the studios were located at Jerusalem Capital Studios Hebrew, Wilpni Hber translate. Ulpani Habira in Beit Egd building in Jerusalem City. Ahead of the 2017 relaunch, all of the company's programs were presented from a temporary studio in Neve Elon, while the main studio was under refurbishment. The Hahadashat 12 programs usually get a high audience relatively to its competitors. Its prime time news bulletin is considered to be the most watched daily show in Israel. Topic: History. The Israel Television News Company was established in 1993 alongside with Channel 2 and became one of its most recognized symbols. The company's various news material is the most consumed in Israel. Over the years, the news company expanded its activity further than the evening news bulletin and started airing other programs like First Edition, Six With, Meet the Press, Friday Studio, and The Economic Program. During all its years of existence, the company had to face competitors from other TV channels, internet websites, and radio. Topic: 1993 to 1997. The news company was established in 1993 by Channel 2's three franchisees, Reshet, Keshet, and Telad. The company was established in order to produce Channel 2's news broadcasts. Its first news broadcast in November 4, 1993 at Jerusalem Capital Studios opened Channel 2's broadcasting, was less than five minutes long, and was anchored by Yaakov Island. As a result of Channel 2's start, Channel 1 decided to move Mabat to 8 p.m., renew its studios in Romema, Jerusalem, create new intros and extend Mabat to be 50 minutes long. 
Island Shalev Wash the news company's first CEO. While the company was being established, Shalom Katal stated that the news company will not hire any reporters from Channel One and instead, hired reporters from other media like radio and newspapers. The company's first reporters were, Yaakov Island, Mickey Haimovich, Guy Zohar, Dana Weiss, Gideon Saar, Rina Matslaya, Oshrat Kotler, Emmanuel Razan, and Aharon Bernaya. After several years, Katal's limitation was removed and reporters from Channel 1 like Gadi Sukhanik and Rafi Reshef and later, Channel 10 were hired. Channel 2's news broadcasts became popular a short time after the channel's start. In May 1994, Channel 2's news bulletin started getting more audience than Channel 1. The competition between the two channels in coverage of events like terrorist attacks caused the channels to start broadcasting breaking news and showed uncensored pictures of body parts. Despite the competition, both channels cooperated during the signing of the Israel-Jordan Peace Treaty in the end of October 1994. The live broadcast of the signing was simulcast in both channels. The same happened again during Yitzhak Rabin's funeral. A turning point of the company's history was Yitzhak Rabin's assassination on November 4, 1995, exactly two years after Channel 2's establishment. Dov Gilhar, who was a Channel 2's reporter at the time, was a few meters away from the assassination's location and immediately sent a message to Roni Daniel and Aharon Bernays pagers. The news company started operating under emergency mode. Yoram Arbel broke into Channel 2's broadcasting from Telid Studios and told the audience about the assassination. The broadcast was moved to the news company and Guy Zohar anchored the breaking newscast from a studio in Tel Aviv. Moshe Nusmam published the assassin's name a few minutes after Yaakov Island replaced Guy Zohar in Jerusalem Capital Studios. After the public announcement of Yitzhak Rabin's death, Rafi Reshef anchored the broadcast all night long. After the assassination, Nachman Shai, the news company's CEO, understood that the competition hurts both Channel 2 and 1, and contacted Mordecai Kirschenbaum, IBA's CEO and asked him to share forces. Kirschenbaum refused and since then, Channel 2's news audience numbers kept rising. A month and a half after the assassination, the news company bought the videotape which contained the footage of the assassination filmed by Roni Kempler, an amateur photographer who filmed the assassination. The news company paid one million shekels for the videotape. This was the first time the news company had an actual advantage over Channel 1's Mabat. Many people asked the news company to air the videotape again, and the company did so. In 1996, there were elections in Israel. The news company prepared for its first election broadcast to compete with Channel 1. Reporters were placed in all parties' headquarters and in 10 p.m., the prediction poll results were published. Eventually, both channels were wrong on their predictions. In 1997, Chaim Yavin, who is considered a legend in Israeli television, stopped anchoring Channel 1's Mabat. Gula even replaced him in Mabat. In that time, Yaakov Island and Mickey Haimovich anchored Channel 2's evening news bulletin. The news company started to feel that their studios were too old and built new ones. In the same year, two CH-53 helicopters crashed and 73 soldiers were killed. In that evening, both of the channels broke into the broadcast and aired the first footage from the spot. One of the photographers accidentally filmed a soldier's bag and his name was written on it. His family who watched the broadcast found out this painful way that their member was killed in the disaster. Topic: 1998 to 2002. In February 15, 1998, television audience measurement started in Israel. 
In the first five months, the news company's broadcasts were not included in the audience measurement reports and only on July 5 of the same year, the Israel Audience Research Board started measuring its audience. Since the beginning of the news company's audience measurements, it was easily noticeable how high its audience numbers were. Usually, the evening news bulletin received between 30-40% of audience watching. Other of the news company's programs got fairly high stats. During the same year, the news company launched a website, a fairly new thing for the time. In the website, users could get constant news updates, read information about the company's programs, anchors, reporters and commentators, contact the desks, and watch live video streams and featured items. The website was on for three years and then was shut down. In 1999, the news company made its second elections broadcast. In this broadcast, the prediction poll conducted by Mina Zemek and De Hoff Institution predicted the elected prime minister correctly. Again, the news company built a special studio for the broadcast. In April of the same year, Chaim Yavin returned to Channel 1 and returned to anchoring Mabat. In order for Channel 1 to gain back some of its viewers, it started airing an early news program for the elections in the same year called 1930. Channel 2's answer to that was the world news program, World Order, with a rad near that aired during the same hour. In December 1999, a studio was built especially for the inauguration of the year 2000. It was called the Millennium Studio and featured state-of-the-art feats such as holographics. The studio was demolished on January 2, 2000. In the early 2000s, when the news company was the most watched in Israel, the anchors changed and many new reporters joined. Carmel Lutzati, Shelly Yakimovich, Oded Ben Ami, 2000, Danny Kushmaro, Ehud Yari, 2001, Aman Abramovic, Oren Weigenfeld, 2003, Lilac Sonin, 2004 to 2013, etc. In 2000, the news company moved to Kiryat Hatik Shorat in Neve Elon. All of the news company's graphics have changed. During the same time, the evening news bulletin was extended from 30 minutes to 45 long. In 2003, the bulletin turned an hour long. As a result of that, the three minute commercial break in the end of the bulletin turned to a total of 12 minutes of commercials in breaks all over the bulletin four times more commercials than what it used to be. In 2000, the second intifada started which caused the news company to be prepared to broadcast news in unusual hours in live reports from the field after every attack. The Ministry of Communications decision to establish a dedicated news channel that will broadcast news 24 hours a day. The bid for the channel started and caused Yaakov Island to leave the news company in order to join Hadashat Israel, a company that competes in the bid. Hadashat Israel started producing Channel 10's news broadcasts. Eventually, the plans to establish the news channel faded out and in 2003, Island left Hadashat Israel to establish Channel 10's independent news company. Channel 10's news bulletin was aired on 1900 and moved to 2000 to compete Channel 2's news. At the same time, Channel 2's news company started using news tickers. After Yaakov Island quit Channel 2, Mickey Haimovich replaced him. The news company's third election broadcast was anchored by Mickey Himovich alongside Dan Shilin. After the election broadcast, Gadi Sukhanik started anchoring the company's evening news bulletin with Haimovich. On March 2, 2002, an incident happened, Hashidur Hamafutzel. On the same day, Telid broadcast a tense football match. Upon being informed of a suicide attack in Jerusalem, Channel 2's broadcast was split. 
In one third of the screen was the football match and on the other two thirds were first reports from the scene of the attack. The soundtrack was only from the reports and after ten minutes, the split screen was ended and the entire screen switched to the news reports. This event caused many reactions and public criticism of Telad and to the news company. With the end of the year, Mickey Haimovich announced that she would leave Channel 2 and move to Channel 10. The news company's executives criticized her for being unprofessional since a week before she left, she started crying during a live broadcast. After Haimovich quit, Yanit Levi and Oshrat Kotler were the main competitors to anchor the news bulletin with Gaudi Sukhanik. Shalom Katal's choice of the 25-year-old Yanit Levi was considered odd since she was young relatively to Sukhanik and her lack of experience. Levi anchored her first bulletin in December 22, 2002. 2003–2006 In the beginning of 2003, Elon Ramon would return to Earth after 15 days in space as Israel's first astronaut. Channel 2's news company prepared a special broadcast to air Space Shuttle Columbia's arrival. Elon Raymond's father was invited to the studio for Israel's first astronaut return from space. The shuttle blew up during its entry to the atmosphere and Elon's father received the information while he was in the studio. Arad Nir was the only reporter who reported live from the arrival in Texas. In 2009, Nir said that it was the hardest broadcast of his career. In the beginning of 2003, Gadi Sukhanik and Yanit Levi anchored the evening bulletin and the news company's fourth election broadcast. During the Iraq War the news company replaced the bulletin's graphics. In the same time, the company cooperated with the internet portal MSN. The website the company's featured video articles. This service was shut down after a short period. In 2005, weatherman Danny Roop announced that he moved to Channel 10. That completed the union of Island Haimovich Roop who were recognized as Channel 2's leading anchors. Channel 1's weatherman Danny Deutsch moved to Channel 2 to replace Roop. In April, the second authority did another bid for two Channel 2 franchisees. Keshet and Reshet won the bid and Telad stopped broadcasting and funding the news company. This caused the news company's deficit to grow to 10 million shekels. In the end of August, after the disengagement plan, the news company replaced its Graph CS for the third time since 2000. The graphics, made especially for this event, aired until August 27, and was replaced by a brand new set of graphics. In the same year, Channel 10's audience measurements started to rise over Channel 1. With the end of the bid, the news company wanted a new CEO but then decided that Shalom Katal will keep his role as CEO. In the company's fifth election broadcast, the company replaced its studios for a special broadcasting week, purchased a 3D graphics system and cooperated with Reshet's satire show, Mishik Mahor. During the entire special broadcasting week, the news company marketed the slogan, Israel chooses to. In the same year, the Knesset's committee chose Channel 2's news company to operate the Knesset channel. Later, in June 2006 when the second bid for the Knesset channel started, the Cable and Satellite Broadcasting Council chose the news company once again to operate the Knesset channel for 10 years. In September 2006, Channel 10's news topped the audience measurements over Channel 2 after the purchase of the film, Hatufam, where the capturing of three IDF soldiers in Hardav in 2000 and a video where Ron Arad is shown talking to a camera in prison. Channel 10's news paid around 1 million shekels. Topic. 2007 
After 12 years in position, CEO Shalom Katal quit Channel 2's news company and Avi Weiss, who was among the executive editors in the company, replaced him. In July 12, 2007 Gadi Sukhanak announced that he quits Channel 2 News and in August 1, anchored his last evening news bulletin and Yannet Levi made a special video which shows all of his work for the company. Although there were some contestants to replace Gadi Sukhanak in anchoring the evening bulletin, it was decided that Yannet Levi will anchor the bulletin alone and Danny Kushmaro will replace her every once in a while. Tamar Ish Shalom who was Channel 10's morning show anchor, joined the news company in October 2007 as a news messenger in London and after she returned, she took the role as an anchor. Eventually, Ish Shalom moved to Channel 10's evening news bulletin in 2011. During the same month, the news company spent two million shekels in building a new advanced and bigger studio. All of the old studio's elements were there but the news desk appeared on a big video screen instead of a window. Gut Suderi, editor of Channel 10's Evening News Bulletin, moved in September 2007 to the news company and replaced Boaz Stembler and Liran Dan. Stembler moved over to edit, Friday Studio, and then quit working for the news company. Liran Dan got assigned to be the head of the project of creating a new website for the news company. The company announced that in the first phase, they will upload their contents in Keshet and Reshet's websites and in the second phase, the company will create their own website where all of their contents will be. In the end, the company decided to abandon the project and keep uploading their contents in Keshet and Reshet's websites. In the beginning of October 2007, two months before the switching of Channel 2's franchisee's broadcasting days, Aharon Bernaya, the anchor of Friday Studio, announced that he will move to Washington, D.C. and will take the role of the news messenger from there. This happened because Reshet wanted to refresh the program since its move to broadcast in this day. Reshet offered the role to Yair Lapid. He anchored. Friday Studio", until January 2012 when he moved on to politics. Topic 2008–2012 In the beginning of April 2008, the news company announced that it got an agreement with El Al to produce and edit a special, 30 minutes long, news program for El Al's passengers. Additionally, in April 17 of the same year, the company started broadcasting in a special online channel in Keshet and Reshet's website. A year and a half later after Avi Weiss started working as the company's temporary CEO, the company's board of directors decided that Weiss will remain CEO for five more years. After half a year when Yair Lapid edited, Friday Studio. Since he joined the news company, in the middle of June, Golan Yokpaz will edit the program. Yokpaz also edited Kolbotech for nine years. In April 2008, the company started producing a daily newsflash in 1300 anchored by Oren Weigenfeld. In September the company launched their webpage in Keshet and Reshet's websites. In 2009, the news company worked with YouTube and offered users to ask the election contestants questions and the contestants will answer them in a special broadcast. The broadcast aired in 1830 on a Saturday and got 19% audience rating. A relatively good number for a program airing in the same hour. In the 2009 elections broadcast, anchored by Yannet Levi, the company cooperated with Keshet's satire show, Eretz Nehedere. The broadcast got 32.6% of audience measurement and while the announcement of the prediction polls, the audience was three times more than Channel 10 and five times more than Channel 1. 
In the beginning of March 2009, Channel 9 notified the news company of its termination of agreement with the news company after six and a half years that the news company made its news program. As a result of the company's bad economic state, in 2009, the company decided to stop some of the programs due to budged cuts. It ended with the company bringing new sources of income like a world weather forecast in some of its short programs which brought more sponsorship advertisements. In May 2011, the company started the Young Edition, a news bulletin for kids, anchored by Gideon Oko. In November 2012, the company started Election System a daily program which covers in depth the 2013 elections anchored by Udi Siegel and Dana Weiss. In December 2012, the company had to stop the programs, Six With, and Meet the Press, and to shorten the evening news bulletin to 45 minutes as a result of the company's board of directors' decision to cut 20 million shekels from the company's budget. After 10 days, a change in the second authority law occurred which helped Channel 2's franchisees. The company cut only 5 million from its budget. Topic 2013 to 2016 In the 2013 elections night, the news company cooperated again with Keshet's Eretz Nehedere and Yannet Levi anchored the broadcast again. The broadcast got 47.7% audience measurements and while the publishment of Mina Zemek and De Hoff Institution S prediction poll the audience measurement was 42.7% and was the most watched broadcast since the beginning of audience measurements. In May 2013, Danny Kushmaro was chosen to anchor Friday Studio. Dana Weiss was chosen to anchor the Weekend News Bulletin and Rena Matslia started anchoring Meet the Press. In October 2013, the company started working with The Kids Channel and producing the Young Edition as a 20-minute daily program alongside with the weekly edition aired on Fridays on Channel 2. In November 2013, the company celebrated its 20-year-old anniversary and aired promos with some of the important events it reported. In the same month, the company started producing a night news edition instead of a midnight news flash which was broadcast until then. Since Yannet Levi went to a maternity leave, Karen Marciano replaced her alongside with Danny Kushmaro. During Operation Protective Edge in July 2014, the average audience measurement was 29.4%, the company's best July ever and its strongest month in its last 15 months. Before the 2015 elections, the company conducted its first debate between the runners for prime ministry. The debate was aired in February 26, 2015 and got 30.6% of audience. In the election night, the company broadcast its evening bulletin from a transparent studio located on the Knesset Plaza as a part of a special broadcasting week. The special broadcast got 37.7% of audience. Topic: 2017 present, splitting of Channel 2 and the move to Keshet 12 and Reshet 13. On May 9, 2017, the EBA announced that it would cease its broadcasts at the end of the week. The channel was replaced with Khan, which would air on Channel 11. At that time, the EBA was airing under 11, Channel 2 under 22, the Educational Television Service on 23, the Sports Channel under 55, the Knesset Channel under 99, and Channel 10 under 10. As a result of this, the major Israeli channels would reform and move to other channels the following period. Because of Karen Marciano going on a maternity leave, Dana Weiss started anchoring the evening news bulletin with Yannet Levi and Danny Kushmaro. 
A short time before Channel 2's splitting, the news company decided to be branded as the news Its contents will be moved to Keshet 12 and Reshet 13 and will be broadcast in HD. As a result of the company building a new studio in Neve Elon, in September 25 the company moved to broadcast in a temporary studio in the same compound. The company started broadcasting from the new studio in November 1 after Channel 2 got split. With the splitting, it was decided that most of the company's contents will be aired on both channels parallelly except for the economic program to be aired only in Keshet 12 and Good Night Israel, as well as Meet the Press, will be aired only on Reshet 13. When a breaking news event happens, the channels will have an option to join the news company's broadcast or to stay with the regular programming. On October 31, 2017, Channel 2's last evening news bulletin was aired and Danny Kushmaro introduced the company's new studio, while Yannet Levi was in the temporary studio. On November 1, 2017, the company started broadcasting in Keshet 12 and Reshet 13 under its new name, The News Hahadashat, from a new studio and in HD quality. On August 1, 2018, the company lost the bid for the Knesset channel and it moved to Channel 10 News. Topic: Programs. All times Israel Standard Time. Topic: Sundays to Thursdays. Mahadora Rishona Hebrew Mahadur Arsun lit First edition 2007 the first newscast of the day broadcast at 4:30 p.m. dealing with the domestic and world news presented by Oren Weigenfeld alternately with Ofer Hadid or Daphna Lyle Shesh I'm Hebrew SSM lit 6 with a Daily Affairs magazine broadcast at 6 p.m., presented by Odid Ben Ami, Savan Rahav Mayer, Arad Nir, and Rina Matslia alternately, originally broadcast at 5 p.m. with Rafi Reshef, and later with Gadi Sukhanik, until 2002. Hataknit Hakalkalit, Hebrew, Twinite Haluklit lit. The Economic Program a half-hour economic news program broadcast at 7.30 p.m. presented by economic correspondent Karen Marciano alternately with Gideon Oko and Oren Weigenfeld. The program is broadcast from 2007. Until August 2008, the program was called The Economic Supplement. Until November 2017 was called Savings Plan and since the split broadcast program only in Keshet 12 under the name of the economic program. Hahadashat Hebrew, HHDs with lit. News the main, prime time news broadcast on weekdays at 8 p.m. The program is usually alternately presented by Yannet Levi and Danny Kushmaro, or sometimes, Dana Weiss or Karen Marciano alternately broadcast since 1993. Layla Tov Israel Hebrew, Lil Tub Yisrael Lit. Good Evening Israel, November 2013 A late night news bulletin broadcast on Wednesdays and Thursdays at 11.15 p.m. alternating presenters. Since November 2017, the program is broadcast on Reshet 13. Fridays. Alice Boué, Arabic, Alasbu Lit. The Week, a weekly news magazine in Arabic broadcast at 1.30 p.m., presented by Forat Nasser. Hamahadora Hatzera, Hebrew, Hamhedor Hazer Lit. The Young Edition, a summary of the week's news presented for children and youth, hosted by Gideon Oko and Liran Zaid, alternately at 1400 and a replay on Saturdays at 7.30.
It also airs daily on the Kids Channel from Sundays to Thursdays, previously broadcast on Eretz Hayaladim and Logi. Ulpan Shishi Hebrew, Welpiensisi Lit. Friday's Studio a prime-time bulletin at 8 p.m. that reviews the news commentary of the week, reports on various subjects and debriefings. The program's current anchor is Danny Kushmaro. In the past, the program was presented by Gaudi Sukhanik, Emmanuel Rosen, Oshrat Kotler, Dan Shilin, Aharon Bernaya and Yer Lapid. Saturdays Seder Alami, Hebrew, SDR Will Me Lit. World Order, a weekly international news magazine broadcast at 5 p.m., which reviews the events of the week in the world by the foreign news editor Arad Nir, aired from 2001 to 2007 in a daily framework and from 2007, alternately broadcast weekly with Arad Nir, foreign news editor, Aharon Bernaya and Gideon Ukko. P. Gosh et Haytanut, Hebrew, P. G. Was T. Hightown Lit. Meet the Presses, 1996, a weekly program broadcast at 6 p.m., in which Rina Matsliach interviews the people who were at the center of news during the past week. Since November 2017, the program is broadcast on Reshet 13. Hadashat Sof Hashavua, Hebrew, HDSWIT SWES HSBW Lit. Weekend News, the weekend prime time news bulletin broadcast at 8 p.m. The first part is devoted to weekend headlines, and the second part focuses on soft news and stories. Presented by Dana Weiss. Topic: Notable anchors. Yannet Levi, Danny Kushmaro, Dana Weiss, Karen Marciano. Yaakov Island, former Mickey Hamovich, former Yer Lapid, former.